Today I'm going to discuss overcoming fear of suffocation and claustrophobia. Fear of suffocation and claustrophobia tend to be interlinked. People who worry about suffocation often dread being in small rooms, hot rooms or rooms without a window as they fear they will not get enough air. The reality is none of these places have a risk of suffocation. We only breathe in small quantities of air. Even in small rooms there would be large volumes of air. A room 2 meters high and 2 meters wide would hold about 8,000 liters of air, which would be enough oxygen to keep you alive for many hours. The reality of the situation is no normal room is airtight. Air flows in through windows and under doors and we could not use that air up before it's replenished. The air we breathe is limitless. The temperature of the room also has no bearing on the amount of oxygen in the room. It can only have an effect on your comfort levels. People with this fear often hyperventilate which only makes the symptoms worse. Claustrophobia is in short a fear of being in an enclosed space. Does being trapped in a lift scare you or perhaps travelling through a tunnel make you anxious? Sufferers can often feel distressed just with the thought of being in a bus, train or plane. Usually any small enclosed space would trigger a panic attack, especially if you felt trapped. The problem with this way of thinking is it spreads to other places. Subways, lifts, small rooms are the classic scenario, but the person's intense fear is not restricted just to these places. The fear and the panic can be experienced in any place where the person perceives a confinement, closeness or trap feeling. For example, having your hair cut and being confined, waiting in a queue, driving, talking to someone for a long period. For me, having my hair cut, a dentist chair, standing up and talking to someone, all used to trigger a panic attack. Before this, I could do all these things and enjoy them. In short, I had developed lots of phobias and started having reoccurring panic attacks, which led to a panic attack disorder. Furthermore, sufferers can feel panic, not just in an enclosed space, but what might happen within that space. If they're in a small room, is there enough air, as discussed before, or not being able to get help in some way? If you're suffering from these issues, then I strongly recommend you read my article on challenging your thoughts. The worst thing you can do is run from these feelings. Some basic advice would be to stay in the situation and challenge your thoughts. In the case of suffocation, just listening to the first part of this video will give you hard facts that you will not suffocate. I would see the fear through and eventually you will see that it will subside. That's if you do not add to the fear with what ifs. If you add to the fear with what if I die in here, what if there are no exits, you will encourage the cycle of fear. Remember, anxiety can only jump to a full blown panic attack if you add fuel to the fire. That's why you must challenge your thoughts. Preferably do this before you enter the situation which may cause you fear. Meditation and challenging your thoughts will bring out long-term change. There is a great quote by Deepak Chopra relating to overcoming fear of suffocation and claustrophobia. He states, holding on to anything is like holding on to your breath. You will suffocate. The only way you can get anything in this physical universe is by letting go of it. Let go and it will be yours forever. Claustrophobia includes two components. Fear of the place. This means that the person fears the limitation in movement and the feeling of being confined. And the fear of the physical sensation. So if you have a fear of small rooms, you may feel like you can't breathe. When a person is confined in a space, they often have intense feelings of panic. And this is coupled with lots of bodily sensations such as sweating, difficulty concentrating, heart palpitations, muscle tensing, etc. Once the person removes them themselves from the area which they perceive is dangerous, the bodily sensations disappear. This happens because the person relaxes and does not have any more negative fearful thoughts about the surrounding area they are in. Their mind and body now fully accepts their new surroundings. There is no trigger to set the fear off. In a bigger room or outside, they have complete faith in their mind that even if they feel sweaty or their breathing is restricted, they're fine, so there is no horrible physical sensations. When a claustrophobic person 
or somebody with panic attacks is in a confined area, they will often perform silly rituals to try and protect themselves from the panic. For example, they will try sitting next to a window for more air. They will sit next to the aisle in the cinema or situate themselves in a room so that they can escape easier. Claustrophobia is one of the most common phobias but also one of the most least treated phobias because many people do not seek help. This is mainly because many people just use avoidance and try to get around the problem that way. Many people do not know that it's perfectly treatable. Many people have just concluded that there is no help and have learned to live with the inconvenience but ultimately not a life changing problem. My anxiety and panic attacks left me with all sorts of phobias and claustrophobic feelings. One by one I managed to overcome them, but there was no magic pill. My free ebook is a great way to start understanding how you can cure yourself of this. My resource page gives you some great resources which helped me along the way to recovery. I especially recommend you read Claire Weeks's books. They will teach you fundamental techniques for overcoming fear. You can find a list of all the resources I've discussed by clicking here and a blog post giving you a video script I've just spoken. Please also don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel for more great videos relating to health and anxiety issues. Have a great day and bye for now.